What's up guys, Ken from Service USA here. Like I said before, we're getting into a lot more YouTube stuff, a lot more how-to videos, as well as my training, uh, updates on this damn injury and all that sort of stuff. So today we are starting out with how to yoke walk. It's something that was asked, uh, or I was asked to cover a while ago and I never got around to it. So today we're going over how to yoke. We're gonna go over setup, uh, you know, your how to pick it, the first steps, acceleration, and even uh, my choice of footwear, so let's get to it. Okay, so like I said, first up is gonna be the setup. So the most important thing with yoke is gonna be your bar height so that you've got the clearance so that when you're running, you're not gonna hit the ground. So one thing I see a lot of the times, you'll see um, less experienced athletes will have their yoke height really high because they don't want to pick it um, like over and over and over. Let me rephrase that. If they have to re-pick it, they don't want a low bar because it's almost like a harder pickup. But the problem with it is uh, when your bar is too high, you run the risk of scraping the ground more. So for me personally, I have it right around, what's that, mid-peck? Right around mid-peck level. That way when I get under it, I can get super, super tight. And then I, when I pick it, I've got plenty of clearance with lightweight and heavyweight. Um, now, if this was a super heavy yoke, I may put it up like one hole, but not much at all. Now, here's a quick tip for you. If you are competing at a contest where you, it's a yoke that you don't use yourself, grab a tape measure, measure from the ground to the bottom of the bar, and then use that measurement at contest and measure where your yoke height is. Now, you can get your yoke height with the one without picking the yoke up, and you know it's gonna be consistent. So for me, I have seven and a half holes on this rogue yoke. The limit or the limitation with this for me is that where I want my height is all, I can only fit the bottom pin in. So then I look at that as a plus because now it's got a bit more wobble within it. Uh, if this is a contest, I would honestly probably take this the next hole down so that um, I've got four pins in it because they're probably not gonna let you run it with one pin aside. And so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice the pick height for a bit more clearance and a bit more stability and all that sort of stuff. So there's your height, big long, big long rant about that. Now, to get set in the yoke, what I do personally is I will grab the yoke just below the supports and I'll actually come through the yoke and then come back on it. So I step through, get my feet set and then slide back into it. So I'm dragging it up my back and then I can set my feet and make sure they're exactly where I want them and now I've got my height. So basically when I want to pick, I, I will like rock my hips under and then just pick straight up. So that's a good way to actually get nice and tight. You'll see a lot of people who'll, who'll come in and they'll get like this and they'll be like, okay, well I'm set and then they'll pick from here. Problem with that is that you have a lot of looseness in your body so you really don't want that. You want to be super, super, super tight so that when you pick up, you can pick and you're solid. You're not wobbling side to side or anything like that right out the gate. So let's talk about the pick. Like I said, you want to get super tight and then get your stability as soon as you pick it. And like I said, having that tightness to begin with really boosts that tightness when you pick. Um, so picking first steps, well, let's go over that right now. Basically, you want to pick it, sit for it. Like, don't take your first step instantly. Pick it, so let it settle for even a second, and then take your first step. So you're getting your hands set, you're coming through, getting tight, and you want your feet about shoulder width because you don't want to be able to have to pull your feet in. So then you get your air, pick, So once you get your air, then take your steps. And what I was saying about the feet is you want shoulder width or where you're gonna walk with, because you'll see a lot of people who will pick the yoke like this, and then what happens is they're tight, they'll take their first step and they shift in. Well, as soon as you shift, you go like this, and then you shift this way, and then, so now you're fighting that side to side movement as well as trying to come down the run. So, let's just put it all together. So we're gonna pick, let it stabilize for a second, hit our first steps. I'll let you see how I accelerate and then I'll talk about acceleration as well.
So what we're doing there is we're getting our, when we pick, we have ourselves stable. And then the way I do is I basically, I lean forward like a tiny little bit and I let that basically propel me. I almost let the yoke drag me into the next step. And what that does is that having that little bit forward motion lets me pick up my pace far quicker than just letting my legs do it. So in terms of acceleration, what you want to think about with yoke race is that you're obviously you're going to hit your max acceleration at some point you want that max acceleration to be as close to you know the, fin the end of the run as possible in my opinion because what that lets you do is it means that you're speeding up the entire time if you hit your max acceleration and you're 20 feet in you're not getting faster for the rest of that you know 40 feet say to hit the to hit the 60. So always think about faster, faster, faster. And the way I do that, is I, like I said, I let it drag me, but I think small steps. Small, sharp, extremely rapid steps. If you, and, and don't don't you can open your, your um you can open your, your walking stance a little bit, but as soon as you go like this and then start going quicker and, and or bigger steps, one you're gonna slow down. And two, you know, you open up the chances of you screwing up, clipping the yoke, taking a bad step. If you have nice short steps, then you're not going to have that. So let's put it all together for one more time. And then, yeah, we'll just put it all together and then show you what it looks like. You always want to have the yoke nice and centered as well. So as you can see there, I pick and I have that split second of stabilization and then I'm letting it drag me through and I'm running as fast as I can. So that's really all there is to yoke. It's not super complicated once you know all the components to break it down into, but just remember short steps, brace hard, always try and brace against your belt. Obviously I'm not wearing a belt right now. Always try and keep this nice and tight when you're running. Short steps, short breaths, that's about it. Catch you next time.